Aloha everyone, welcome to Skincare with Hiram. If you don't know who I am, my name is Hiram and I'm passionate about teaching you how to perfect your skincare routine. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and to the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. Ooh -hoo -hoo. I feel like I lose my balance in my intro on a weekly basis at this point. It is like a habit. I'm so excited for this reaction video. I have long waited, debated, and totally overlooked that this routine even existed. I'm going to be reacting to Hilary Duff's skincare routine. I can't describe how much I love Hilary Duff. <sighs> you know what's coming. Let the rain fall down and wake my dreams. Let it wash away my sanity. Or I can hear a single word. Just know you're talking cause your lips keep <laughs> Out loud. I'm ashamed to my family. An embarrassment to society. I love Hilary Duff's music. I know that everyone is like interested in Hilary Duff for like different reasons. Like some people got into her acting. Some people got into like Lizzie McGuire. I was definitely the person that got into her music because when I started like watching TV, I feel like I was a little bit after Lizzie McGuire. Like I started watching in like Wizards of Waverly Place, Sunny with a Chance, iCarly, Drake and Josh Days. And Lizzie McGuire was just a little bit before that. But Metamorphosis was definitely on my siblings playlist when I was little and I grew up to that shit. So Yesterday, Come Clean, ugh, just so good. And her more recent songs, which I love, like Sparks. If you don't know that song, so underrated. You guys gotta listen to it. Anyway, I will stop fangirling for a moment. It's clear by now, I love Hilary Duff. And that woman has not aged. Oh my God. She has remained looking so young for so long. I don't know what it is. Definitely part of it is from being unproblematic, but man, her skin is just gorgeous. So I am so excited to see what her skincare routine is. I know it's not very long, but regardless, I'm still gonna watch it and react because I just, I have to know what is in this routine. So let's get into it. If you don't know me, I've worked as a specialist, but I am not a licensed esthetician or a dermatologist, nor do I ever, ever, ever claim to be one. That is not my path in life, and I don't want my videos to be confused as professional advice. I make these videos to be able to share helpful information about skincare and my opinions, but if you are struggling with any concerns in your skin, please go see your esthetician or dermatologist to get that shit treated. This is all just for fun and information's sake. Okay, so I'm looking right now, and I guess she has done a more recent skincare routine than the one I was initially going to react to, but I don't know if I should react to the Vogue one or if I should react to the most recent one. What do you guys think? Just kidding, you can't respond. Um, I don't know which one to choose. You know what, I'm just gonna stick with her Vogue one. If you guys do want an updated one with her more recent routine, let me know because I will totally do that. But I feel like I'm gonna stick to the Vogue one because this is the most viewed one and I feel like the one people have requested the most. So I'm just gonna watch this one. It's so tempting to watch both because I love her, but I need to set limits for myself. I need to control myself. Don't be too fangirl crazy, I am. I'm Hilary Duff and <sighs> I am going to show you my skincare routine. <sighs> Can't today. handle, she's so pretty. Mom. So I don't pretty. have a ton of time to do my makeup. Also, I love her jewelry. This version today is like on a day where I have my kids, but I also have a couple meetings. I want to. I forget she has kids. <laughs> like her aging has been so stunted that I forget she literally is like a mom with kids, busy life. It's just wild. Uh, she's just one of those people that just seems to have her shit together. I admire those people so much. There's like people in my life to where I look at them. They look good. They're confident. They're successful. They're busy, productive. And I'm like. Can I just have a crumb of that? Just a side order, an appetizer. I want that. And she just radiates that energy to the extreme. But this version today is like on a day where I have my kids, but I also have a couple meetings. I want to look like I put some effort in. Sometimes I either wash my hands or just do a little hand sanitizer. Oh, so I'm going that's to great. Not many people actually talk about the importance of washing your hands before you start your routine, but it's actually really important. Whatever you have on your hands, whether it's like dirt, bacteria, or even something like hair product, you definitely don't want that to be going onto your skin. I'd say the best case scenario is to wash your hands, but if you don't have access to that, then hand sanitizer will work. The important thing is always making sure that your hands are clean before you start your routine. I feel like I, I don't talk about that as much as I should, but I really should mention it more. Good job, Hillary, for bringing that up. So I'm going to tone with this Ole Henriksen toner. Tone. So one really cool thing that happened to me when I had babies was I got melasma, and it hangs out right here on my forehead. This one is a dark spot toner, so mm -hmm. every day I just say a little prayer that it's taking care of that dark spot right there. I'm gonna <laughs> let it dry. Hmm. Okay, so I'm a little bit first curious to see why she doesn't go in with a cleanser. I feel like most celebrities usually do include a cleanser in their routines. I will say this is a makeup routine, so maybe she just cleanses in the shower and doesn't feel like doing it on camera. Something I totally relate to because when I do my skincare routines on camera, the worst part is having to cleanse. 
because I usually cleanse in the shower and it is a pain having to do it and not get it into your eyes and making a mess everywhere. So I'm just gonna assume she didn't include that in the video because this is a makeup focused video technically, but she goes in with the Ole Henriksen Dark Spot Toner. Now that's like one of their most popular products, if not their most popular product. I see people using it all the time. And if you do wanna know my full thoughts on the product and the brand overall, go watch my Truth About Ole Henriksen video. I talk about it in depth there, but Overall, just the brand and the product, I'm not the biggest fan of. While I do think some of the ingredients in that toner are good, I feel like it's packed with way too many irritants and it's not as effective as it could be, particularly for someone who does have melasma and for someone her age. I do think that Ole Henriksen can be good for people who are, you know, just kind of starting into the skincare game and not as good for people who are really serious about taking care of their skin or people who are a little bit older and have to reverse longer damage than something that has just come up over the past few years. Yeah, I mean, looking at the ingredient list again, it does have glycolic acid, which is great for reducing the dark spots. But the third ingredient is witch hazel water, which I'm not in love with. It does have lactic acid, which is great. But right at the top of the ingredient list is fragrance, which is not not a great thing. And the thing about Ole Henderson products is that when you use them, you can definitely notice that there's fragrance in them, which automatically is kind of a turn off to me. To be completely honest, there are so many exfoliating toners and just exfoliating products on the market that I feel like are better than this one. You can find a ton of products that have a blend of multiple exfoliants to address any darkness and dark spots in the skin. Some ones I personally think are really effective are like the Crave Beauty KLL Yaha, which is glycolic acid based. It's a little bit more gentle, but really effective. Or one of my new favorite exfoliating blends, the Multi-Acids and Probiotics serum by PSA Skin. It's great. It's not sensitizing or irritating. It's relatively gentle, but still effective. Or if you want something more powerful, the Ordinary Glycolic Toning Solution is a really power-packed glycolic acid base toner that'll help to get rid of that. Or the Use to the People Kombucha 11% Power Toner, I believe that's what it's called. That one's a great blend of acids that's really powerful. Honestly, there's just so many alternatives I could recommend, all of which in my opinion have way better ingredient lists than this one, and I think would be better suited for her skin. That being said, if you are someone who struggles with melasma and you've had that checked by a dermatologist, please always check your products with a dermatologist and take their advice. That's definitely important, but just in general, I feel like any of those products would be better. Also, by the way, I did see her using cotton rounds and I just want to say something real quick. There's this belief that you have to apply toners with cotton rounds and that's not true whatsoever. Like all the toners and essences I typically use, I just pour them directly. Stay away from the sixth grade humor harm. You're above this. You're strong. You can do this. I'm sorry. I'm so immature. Oh, okay, remember harm. You're 24. Oh, I'm sophisticated. <laughs> But you can just pour them into your hand and just apply them directly into your skin. Or if you are someone who really does want to use that cotton round experience, you can find a ton of reusable ones online or you can find them linked down below. Oh, by the way, all the products that I'm talking about in today's video will be linked in the description box below. If you do want to support me on my channel, feel free to use those links because I do make a commission, but no pressure whatsoever. They're just there to help you out. But you can find reusable ones that won't create that daily waste. So it's an option if you're looking for that. But otherwise, you can totally just pour toners, especially like that one, into your hand and just apply it directly into your skin with no waste generated. When it's super dry in California, glycerin, favorite vegan products, oh. is ultra hydrating, made with oils, it has lavender in it. I take a little scoop with these long I don't love that. And I'm going to warm it up because see how thick it is? Yeah, it's very So thick. I rub for almost 10 seconds. <laughs> She's so cute. I really love oils. If your skin can handle it, it's mm. quite a treat, but also sticking with what you know works for you is a great tip. I wonder if she has dry skin. If she likes really thick products like that, she may have pretty dry skin. Because most people now actually really prefer moisturizers that have a more like whipped, lightweight texture, as opposed to super thick where you have to really warm it up in your hand. So I'd be curious to know what skin type she has. But to be honest, I'm not familiar with that product. Glycelin Beauty Ointment. Hmm, I'm surprised I haven't heard of this before. I mean, ointments and really thick balms like this are typically more popular among like older women. Sometimes they can be considered a little bit old fashioned, but maybe this is a new product. I could be totally out of it. Who knows? Oh, okay, so it says the breathable petroleum jelly alternative. Okay, I mean, there's nothing wrong with petroleum jelly. It doesn't have the entire ingredient list here, but the good thing is that there is an unscented version, so I can respect that. Holy jeez, that is expensive, $75. $75, oh my God. Ooh, especially for a, a product that claims to be a petroleum jelly alternative because petroleum jelly is so affordable. It's crazy cheap and it's great for the skin. It isn't the most luxurious thing ever, but 
it still works really well. I can't find the entire ingredient list, but it says it has Q10, which is a great antioxidant, one of my favorite antioxidants on the market. I think it's amazing. It has shea butter and glycerin, so that makes sense. Those are usually alternatives to petroleum jelly. Maybe not as effective, but still amazing ingredients. Rice bran, rosemary, and tocopherol. Okay, so great ingredients. I hope by rosemary they mean rosemary extract, because that is definitely amazing, while rosemary oil is an irritating essential oil. And powerful antioxidants like acai, babasu, and passion fruit. Okay, I mean, from what I can read, that sounds like an amazing ingredient list. I wish I could see what the entire ingredient list is like, but it says it's fair trade, it's vegan, fragrance free. It says it's preservative free, which I don't love because preservatives are great. Like skincare needs to have preservatives in order for it to make sure it doesn't grow any mold or anything. So I don't love that. But overall, it seems like it has some really bomb ingredients. I don't know if I would pay $75 for 1.7 ounces. That's insane, y'all. But you know, it is Hillary Duff. You know, she can spend whatever she wants to. She's a celebrity after all, but I don't think you'll be catching my ass paying that much. And just again, to remind you guys, there's nothing wrong with petroleum jelly. It's great for the skin. It works really well. There's no proper evidence that it clogs pores and it's fine for the environment. So I use that as a bit of a serum, even though it's super moisturizing. I'm still going to put a cream on top. It's also by Glycelline. Smells like cucumber, which I love. Okay, glycerine. She doesn't show the product, so let me just look at the moisturizers. Oh, okay, here we go. A lightweight cucumber cream formulated with active plant-based extracts. It is $95 for 1.7 ounces. Oh my God, this this brand is just, <laughs> it's uh, that's so, oh. Okay, let's see the ingredients though. Again, they don't show the entire ingredient list, which I don't love, and I mean, we'll see. I'll try to be open-minded. It says it has hyaluronic acid, peptides, and lipids. That's great. I'd be curious to know what peptides are in the product because just saying peptides is kind of like saying it has vitamin. It doesn't really tell you a ton about what's in the formula, but it also has uh, organic orange water. Not in love with that, but it's not terrible. It probably won't irritate the skin too much because it's a diluted water. It has sunflower oil. Love that. Shea butter. Oh, and it has red and brown algae. We love algae. That's like great, great. It doesn't say anything about it being fragrance free, but she says it does smell like cucumber, so I'm hoping there's just a good amount of cucumber extract because cucumber extract actually does have a natural aroma, even though it's really beneficial for the skin. So I'm just going to hope it has that. But regardless, I'm still not going to pay $95 for that. <laughs> oh, hell no. Honestly, if you're looking for a good alternative cream, I would say there's a lot of creams on the market that are formulated with those ingredients. Like red and brown algae is a little bit more unique. I will say those aren't as common in the majority of formulas, but ingredients like shea butter, sunflower seed oil, peptides, lipids, and hyaluronic acid. Very, very common. Honestly, if you're wanting good products that do incorporate algaes, I recommend the Biosense moisturizers. You'll get a lot. It's definitely a lot cheaper. They last a long time. They have amazing ingredients and they're fragrance-free. For her skin type, I would guess that the richer one would work better, but I do like the probiotic one that has red algae. It sinks into the skin so quickly and feels amazing. Or if you're looking for something with more of a lipid and peptide focus, try the Skin Fix Lipid Peptide Cream. It's amazing. So good. I use it overnight. It's very rich, very thick, but it restores your skin so beautifully. And as for the other ingredients, you can, I'm serious, literally find them in any products on the market. So not super special. No need to spend $95, but hey, at least these products do have good ingredients. I'm feeling really moisturized. And she probably has time dry pushing in the product with oh, this okay. Nurse Jamie tool is such a dream. I never have a ton of time, but it does really wake up your skin. Hmm. As I've gotten older, <laughs> I notice in the morning I'll have like my pillowcase lines on my face. Such a bum oh. out. This tool saves me. The neck That's for cool. sure needs love because if you're a face sleeper like me, I'm just like smashed up on my face when I sleep. Um, these guys can really get creasy. You mean to tell me that she is an ex-Disney actress, a mom, she sleeps with her face buried in her pillow, has lines in the morning, and still doesn't age? What magic potion is she drinking? Because literally if I did any of that stuff, I'd be looking like that woman who comes down the staircase in Howl's Moving Castle. It would not be cute. Man, I wonder how she does it. Like, that is amazing. All I can say is genetics for the win. Like, good for her. As for my thoughts on that tool, like when it comes to any type of facial massager, like most of them are just like, hey, if they work for your skin, great. I don't think there's necessarily like a ton of research or data actually confirming if they are going to be really effective for getting rid of aging and preventing damage and all those sorts of things. But if you enjoy the experience, then who's to say that they're not bad to use? They can be really enjoyable, but there's no need to pay like 500, 600, 700 for these tools. 
tools. That's where I draw the line. Just like be sensible about it. And I have seen that tool before, but I have yet to see it recommended for people who get pillow creases on their face. That's very interesting. I'd be curious to see if that works for me because every once in a while I do have that nap that just sends you into another universe. And when you wake up, you're like, what world am I in? Maybe that'd be helpful. First, I'm going to put on a Ren eye cream. Oh, okay. And then my favorite thing to do with eye cream is put it here. I do the same thing. Left. Yes. A lot of people underestimate the aging that will occur right here. This area, because it's an expression line, tends to age very, very quickly. So I always take my eye cream and I put it down here. And in the past, when I struggled with deep set forehead lines, I'd always put my eye cream on my forehead line as well. So very cool. Um, I'm not familiar with that Ren eye cream. Let me look. Ren is one of those brands that... Like I love their anti-redness serum is amazing. As a brand, they're doing so well, but they they just need to come out with more fragrance-free formulas. That's my only request. Well, actually here's an example of a product from them that doesn't have ingredients that I hate. Um, it has a lot of rich moisturizing oils like camellia, green tea oil, squalene, rosehip oil, shea butter. It has a peptide complex, bisabolol, which is an amazing antioxidant. Um, it may have some palm oil, but I'm not 100% sure. That could just be safflower oil and sunflower seed oil. It does say that it has citronellol and geraniol, which are fragrant components, but sometimes those can, those can be naturally present in really good ingredients. And I only get a little bit concerned about those when I see that a formula has fragrant essential oils. So in this formula I'm not too worried about it I mean it's $44 so she is expensive but it is an example of a Ren product that I like which is great and I know that Ren product is coming out with more like fragrance free and inclusive formulas so I'm very happy about that so keep it up Ren because I love your philosophy and your commitment to sustainability before I start my makeup I'm gonna throw in these fancy little oh clips please tell me you use a sunscreen Please tell me. I just recently started using this Paracone MD, oh. <laughs> and I love it. I no. really feel like you want your skin to breathe. Hillary, okay, literally how of how is your skin that on. perfect if you're I'm not using a sunscreen? Here. I am Confucian. So she is using the Paracone foundation, which technically has an SPF, but if we know anything about SPF foundations, it's that they really do not deliver the SPF that you need. In order to get that proper SPF, you would have to use basically like a tablespoon amount of foundation on your face, which no one uses. And you shouldn't rely solely on the SPF of your foundation. You should be using a sunscreen underneath and that should just be an extra bonus. And I'm so shocked that she doesn't go in with a sunscreen because she has such stunning skin. I would have figured that she would have talked about how she's always used sunscreen since she was a little kid and super important so I'm genuinely surprised girl you need a sunscreen that is a must-have especially if you do struggle with melasma do you have a dermatologist has your dermatologist told you to wear sunscreen hmm I wonder if she's not listening to her dermatologist uh that makes me sad <laughs> but if you are wanting some good sunscreen recommendations some of my personal favorites one that i'm loving right now is from rovectin clean it's their spf 50 zinc oxide based sunscreen super good nice finish on the skin or if you want something a little bit suited to your skin tone the first aid beauty mineral spf is really good it's a little bit grainy but it still has a really nice finish on the skin and absorbs any excess oil or if you're wanting something more nourishing the crave beauty beat shield spf is so good i wish i could use it more but it's definitely more for like drier skin so hillary may really like it or the biosant squalene spf is also super good well it works for a variety of skin tones there's so many options out there i'll have them all linked down below but please use the sunscreen please don't just rely on your foundation spf because that's really not going to get you anywhere and realistically you're probably getting an spf rating of two three maybe five at best when you should be getting at least spf 30 every single day well what are my thoughts on that routine i mean it's pretty simple and i managed to drag it on for fucking forever so Good job, Hiram. It wasn't annoying at all. And considering it's almost 1 a.m., I should really wrap up. But overall, I thought it was... Well, actually not that great. I was gonna say okay, <laughs> but to be honest, I really, I feel like I liked the eye cream. I didn't have an issue with the massager. The face creams were okay. I mean, I didn't really know what the entire ingredient lists were, so I can't really make up my mind about those. I definitely didn't like the Ole Hendrickson toner and a sunscreen wasn't used, so... Hillary, I need some help. Just give me something to work with. Overall, I personally don't really like these formulas. And if you were to ask my opinion, I would say definitely genetics is a key factor in how her skin looks so good, especially if she's not wearing a strong sunscreen. And I hope that lasts for as long as possible because her skin is gorgeous. But yeah, I'm not crazy about this routine. Hopefully it improves in the future. And if you guys do want to see me react to her other video that she did more recently, feel free to let me know. I'm happy to do another reaction video. And if you guys haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week and I'll see you guys in the next one. Mwah.